Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You like my new jewelry? You're gonna look at this all night. And you're thinking, what in the world? Well, you know what? I am so fed up with people hearing people say, I'm busy as an excuse <laughs> for not doing the things that they should do, like taking care of themselves, spending time with the people they love, returning phone calls, <laughs> doing things right the first time, spending time with God. Hello, anybody home? I'm busy, well, I'd love to work out, but I'm busy. Well, you know, I'd love to see you sometime, but I'm busy. Well, you know, I'd love to eat better, but I just, I'm just too busy to fix good stuff. I just gotta get the drive-through junk all the time. You know, I'm just, I'm too busy to balance my checkbook, so I have no idea what's going on in my life. I'm just, <laughs> I'm too busy. And God has never one time asked us to be busy. He has asked us to be fruitful. And actually, I can say that being busy keeps us very often from being fruitful. Now, everybody's going to want to know if they can buy one of these buttons. No, we don't sell them. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully. Everybody say purposefully. <clears throat> and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and the witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Let's look at Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Behave yourselves wisely, prudently, and with discretion. <clears throat> in your relationships with those of the outside world, the non-Christians, making the very most of the time and seizing and buying up every opportunity. Now, we are ambassadors for Christ, those of us that claim to be Christians. We're supposed to be uh, walking, living, breathing billboards for Christ. People are supposed to look at our lives and want a life like we have. Amen? And so that means that we learn to be in the world but not of the world. So the whole world can be stressed out until they just feel like tearing their hair out, but that's not for us. That's not normal living if we're going to live the new life that Jesus died for us to live. He said, I am the way. So he teaches us a way to live that will help us not to have to live like that. He says we need to buy up every opportunity. So when you're sitting at lunch with your friends at work, or your enemies at work, whatever they are, <laughs> and everybody's gossiping, complaining about their job, complaining about the boss, complaining about the conditions, complaining, 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 and you join in, then you have just wasted your time and missed an opportunity, not necessarily to preach. You don't have, you know, if, if, if even saying to them, oh, you shouldn't complain, the Bible says blah, blah, blah. I'm not suggesting you do that, but what you can do is say, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you, but personally, I'm thankful that I've got a job. There's a lot of people today that don't have a job at all. And, you know, you can always take an opportunity to just kind of throw a little word in there for God, throw a little advertisement in for God, like, I thank God I've got a job. Well, you know, I'm praying about the situation here. Maybe the situation isn't good. I'm praying about it, and I believe that, you know, 
God's working. You don't have to preach a full one-hour sermon to get a little word in there for God every now and then. I'm not suggesting that you go to work and, you know, be branded as the religious nut in the office because if you are, nobody will listen to you anyway. But we can take every opportunity. Come on, I'm talking to you. Listen to me. The world is in an unbelievable mess. I mean, unbelievable. The mess in the world is unbelievably bad. It is so bad, I don't even know how to talk about it. And the Bible tells us that darkness is going to get darker and the light is going to get lighter. And there's going to be a division between God's people and people that are not God's people. And we cannot suppose that having a bumper sticker and a cross around our neck is enough advertisement to claim that we're a Christian, especially not if you're going to have a bumper sticker while you break the speed limit. <laughs> or give funny little hand signs at the other drivers when <laughs> they don't make you happy. Somebody gets over in your lane an inch and you're like, Speed past them with your bumper sticker. Honk if you love Jesus. <laughs> now, you know what? The truth is, it is so sad that it is funny. But it's really not funny. We laugh because we don't really know what else to do about it, I guess. But the thing is, is to change it. God's not asking me to be so busy that I'm so frustrated that I have no uh, self-control to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. He's asking us to be fruitful, making the most of our time, buying up every opportunity to bear fruit for God. You can change a life by just getting out in the world and acting like a Christian. I said you can change a life how many of you want a ministry? I can give you a ministry right now. There's two things we're all called to, intercession and reconciliation. We are to work with God to see other people reconciled to him, brought into relationship with him through word and deed, and I think it's more through deed than it is through word. Get out in the world and start loving people. I mean, just love people. Just smile, be nice. Don't be as frustrated as everybody else. And when they ask you, how can you have such peace? Now you can tell them. God needs you. If he didn't need you, then you wouldn't be here. <laughs> God needs us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Him in us is the hope of us ever being glorified, but I think it's also the hope of him being glorified. Jesus wants to work through you. You don't have to sit and look at other people being used by God and say, I wish I had a ministry. Anybody can have a ministry that wants a ministry, and it doesn't have to be on a pulpit or a platform. It can be in your neighborhood, across your backyard fence, over the top of your computer at work, at lunch, driving down the highway, we can, also, we can all be a witness for God. John 15, verse 8, let's look at that. When you bear and produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you show yourselves to be true followers of mine. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. I have appointed you. I have planted you. <laughs> I love that. You know, I believe that wherever we're at, what city we live in, the town we live in, the neighborhood we live in, the house we live in, I believe that God has planted us there Amen. for a reason. God's planted you in the place where you're at right now. Bloom where you're planted. And then if God wants to move you somewhere else, he'll move you somewhere else. But don't ever try to move unless you've bloomed where you're at. 
Let me say that again. Don't ever try to move until you first bloomed where you're at. One more time. Don't ever try to move until you've bloomed where you're at. I've planted you that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit might be lasting that it might remain and abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, presenting all that I am, he might give it to you. Now, you know, that's a pretty wild statement. If you bear fruit, whatever you ask God, he'll give it to you. Well, the only way that I know how to even make any sense at all out of a promise like that is fruit bearing and spiritual maturity go together. So, we're not being invited into a relationship with God so we can stay baby Christians all of our lives and have to have our own way to be happy and get to do what we want all the time to be happy and hate the word sacrifice and hate the word hard and, you know, get all dejected every time there's a trial or a tribulation. We need to be able to endure. The Bible says, get this, endure whatever comes with good temper. Oh. Come on, think about that. That's a painful scripture. Endure whatever comes. Even if it's a storm that wasn't in the forecast. You thought you were going to have a sunny day, and man, was your day ever rotten. And God doesn't want you to throw a fit like everybody else would and start saying all kinds of stuff out of your mouth. I don't understand anything. Just trust God's stuff, and I go to church, and I give, and look, my give, give, give. No, God wants, to, God wants us to be the kind of people say, okay, this is a test. I got a chance here to really let God shine. Help me, Jesus, to be stable. Help me to keep bearing the fruit of the Spirit. I want to act like you would act in this situation. That should be our first prayer in any kind of trouble. I want to behave the way you would behave. You might say, well, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah, you're not, but you do have his spirit. You do have his name. You do have his power. <laughs> you are his child. And so I guess if we're that connected at the hip, we ought to at least show some resemblance of being like him. The fruit of the Spirit is so important. Sometimes there's too much concern over what my gift is. <laughs> What's my gift? I still haven't even figured out what mine is. I'm just <laughs> decided to pay more attention to fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, meekness, gentleness, humility, self-control, doing something to make somebody else's life better. You know, the most fruitful life that you can live is to get yourself off your mind and live to make somebody else happy. I hope you keep clapping because we're going to tear into selfishness tomorrow night. You know that song, You Were Always On My Mind? It was an old country song. Well, I sang it the wrong way. I sang, I was always on my mind. <laughs> Thank God for change. All right. I guess I could pull my message out here and say if I want to say anything on it. <laughs> you know, I believe that busyness is a deception, and I think it's a curse. I think it's Satan's way of stealing the life that God wants people to have. And the closer we get to the end, the closer we get to the time of Christ's return, the needier that people are in the world, the busier everybody gets. So some way, somehow, they must be connected together. Let's look at Mary and Martha, Luke chapter 10. Luke 10, 38. Now, while they were on their way, it occurred that Jesus entered a certain village, and a woman named Martha received and welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was listening to his teaching. 
The Bible says that we need to recognize the time of our visitation. So Mary recognized that a visitation was taking place. Jesus was in the house. And she stopped whatever she was doing and sat herself down to take advantage of that time of visitation. Some of you have carved out this weekend out of your schedules because you wanted to come and meet with God in a special way. You wanted to set aside this weekend to hear his word, to worship, uh, to be in a house full of believing people. You, you wanted to come and camp out with God. It's a, a time of God's visitation in your life. But obviously, if everybody would have been here who should have been here, who wasn't too busy to be here, then we would have had to have turned lots of people away. I don't think you should ever have an empty seat in a church. Ever. Not one. As desperate as the world is today, every church should be packed full. And maybe they would be fuller if those that are already in them would start acting And I don't mean putting on an act. I mean acting like believers. So Mary knew the time of her visitation. She stopped. You know, when you're busy, you can't even be interrupted by God. <laughs> we, we, we hang signs on our hotel doors. Don't interrupt us but you shouldn't have one of those on your life. Because no matter what your plan is any given day, God has the right to interrupt your plan with his plan anytime he wants to. I believe in having a plan. I, I'm a person of purpose and I wake up every day with a plan. I could tell you what I have planned for the next two weeks. Well, actually probably three. I look over my schedule every morning. I, I'm a person of purpose. I don't, uh, I want to bear good fruit. I feel better about life when I bear good fruit. But a lot of my days don't turn out the way that I had planned because God has the nerve to interrupt me. <laughs> Why is it I ask you that we will let everybody else in the world interrupt us? You plan to clean your house today, which desperately needs to be cleaned. And Sister Martha calls and wants to know if you want to go to a big sale that she just found out about. And you already promised God you're gonna get out of debt, quit putting money on those charge cards, and now you just blow the whole thing over an emotion because, woohoo, 70% off, wow, I gotta do that. So we don't have any trouble letting stuff like that interrupt us, but when God wants to interrupt us, maybe you're trying to follow your plan and you just keep thinking about your elderly mother or your elderly aunt in the nursing home that you haven't seen for two months. Ooh. Really, Joyce, do we have to go there? Yeah, probably. Probably we do. Or you're busy with your plan and you keep thinking about somebody that you just feel like you're supposed to call them up and encourage them. I was pretty busy the other day and I kept having somebody on my mind, a, a young girl I know that's very pregnant right now. And I know sometimes very pregnant people don't always feel like they're the prettiest things in the world. They just feel pregnant. Big and pregnant. Swollen feet, nothing fits. Back hurts. Already got two kids hanging on you. I just kept feeling like I was supposed to call her up and tell her she was beautiful. Well, you know, sometimes we feel silly telling people. It's like, but I've learned a long time ago, if I want to enjoy the rest of this day, I might as well do the part God wants me to do now. And <laughs> Come on. So I'm sure that Mary had a plan and Jesus interrupted it. He just came to the house. But Martha, verse 40, 
overly occupied and too busy was distracted with much serving and she came to Jesus and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? <laughs> Do you know, busy people are annoyed by people who aren't as busy as they are. It irritates a busy, frustrated, stressed out person when somebody else has peace. What do you think? Lazy. <laughs> do nothing. Couch potato. Yeah, just sit there and look at the birds out the window while I, <laughs> while I run around and change the world by myself. <laughs> Woo! So Martha didn't like it that Mary had let Jesus interrupt her. But the Lord replied to her by saying, Martha, Martha, <laughs> you are anxious and troubled about many things. Now you notice, he didn't tell Martha not to work. He told her not to worry. <laughs> There's need of only one or but a few things, and Mary has chosen the good portion, that which is to her advantage, that which shall not be taken away from her. You know, I would like to suggest tonight that we start putting more of our time in things that will last for eternity. Let's say it again. Let's start putting more of our time into things that will be eternal things. Amen? Well, I want to encourage all of us, including myself, to look closely at how we're using our time. And let's ask God how He wants us to spend it, because, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. We want to make sure we don't waste it, but that we invest it wisely. om te dansen in de zon en te zingen in de regen. Een tijd om uitbundig te lachen en onbekommerd op avontuur te gaan en om je vervelende broertje te plagen. Kind zijn betekent leren, groeien, geloven en dromen. Maar ook nu zijn er op de wereld heel veel kinderen die geen idee hebben van hoe je kindertijd zou moeten zijn. Ze zijn alleen bezig met overleven. Deze kleintjes moeten s'nachts vaak slapen zonder een dak boven hun hoofd. Ze hebben dorst, lijden honger en voelen zich eenzaam. Sommige van hen hebben zichzelf die dag meermalen moeten verkopen voordat ze hun misbruikte lichaam te rusten kunnen leggen. Helaas is dit niet een verhaaltje over een handvol kinderen in een onzichtbare wereld. Nee, het is een keiharde werkelijkheid. Hier en nu, voor echte kinderen, onze kinderen. Sommigen leven bij jou om de hoek. Anderen hier vele duizenden kilometers vandaan. Maakt die afstand dat een kind minder behoefte heeft aan liefde, bescherming en verzorging? Maken geslacht, ras of omstandigheden dat een kind minder deel uitmaakt van onze menselijke familie? Nee, toch? Een mens is een mens. Een 
nood is een nood. En een kind is een kind. Zo kostbaar in Gods ogen. In welke uithoek van de wereld een kind ook om hulp roept... wij moeten er gehoor aan geven. Op welke grond de tranen van een kind ook vallen... wij gaan erheen. We have traveled long and come so far upon this road and we've seen mountain high and valley low we will battle on die ons hun steun waard vinden, zijn wij in staat om vele hulpbehoevende kinderhanden vast te pakken. Maar er zijn nog veel meer kinderen op de wereld die schreeuwen om hulp. Geeft u daar gehoor aan? Ze zijn op zoek naar een helpende hand. Helpt u ons mee om ze die te bieden? Have you ever wanted to help hurting people, but you feel like you can't make a difference? I want you to know that you can. When we work together, we can feed hungry children, rescue women from human trafficking, and help victims of natural disasters. Uh, that's just few of the things that we can do. And I'm asking you, if you're not a partner with our ministry, I'm asking you to partner with us, to become a financial partner with the ministry. And that means that you do something on a regular basis, monthly or, or quarterly, but we need people all over the world helping us so we can keep reaching hurting people. And honestly and truly, what each one of us can do by ourselves is minute compared to what we can do if we put it all together. And so I'm inviting you to join the family today and make an amazing difference all over the world for God's glory. You can be a world changer. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meyer.nl overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed, het is het waard. Zelfbewust te zijn heeft alles te maken met vertrouwen op God. Dit is precies waar het over gaat in het dagboek van Joyce. Je bent wonderlijk gemaakt. Vertrouw op God en weet dat je waardevol bent voor Hem. Hij geeft je de kracht om nieuwe dingen te doen en hiervoor je gaven in te zetten. God heeft je wonderlijk gemaakt om moedig en vrij jezelf te zijn. Met dit dagboek voor vrouwen ontdek je elke dag iets meer hoe kostbaar je bent voor God. Bestel je bent wonderlijk gemaakt door te bellen met 026 2022 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash wonderlijk.